Welcome to the Church Answers Podcast. My name is Tom Rayner, and you heard that bumper coming in, the lady talking about Cheney and Associates. Love our new sponsor. They are the counting firm for the church. They're the, they're the place you need to be to, to have your bookkeeping done, to have your taxes done. And uh, they've been around for 21 years. They've helped over 1,100 churches. Everything's cloud-based, which means that you'll always have access to the information and it's safe. Oh, look, they work with small churches, church plants, mega churches. They are the accounting firm for the church. We love it. Thank you, Steve Cheney. Thank you for your team. And we are so appreciative of you for making this your sponsored and featured podcast. Okay, here's what we've been doing on the Church Answers Podcast. This week, as we drop three episodes, I have been talking about questions from those who don't attend church. These are real questions. These are questions that have come across at Church Answers or questions that other pastors have told us that they hear from family members who don't attend church, from uh, from uh, co-workers who don't attend church, from merchants who don't attend church. Quite frankly, there are a lot of people who don't attend church. And there's some of them who dropped out of church, and so they're, they, 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 they remember why certain things happen in church. But there's a growing number. I've been following... You know, we, we brought Ryan Burge on as part of our research team at Church Answers and has a lot of great data about one segment of the unchurched that never been to church. And that's a, unfortunately a growing segment. And if, if it's either that group or those who stopped when they were very young, who, who stopped going attending church that just don't know some of these things that we who are church members or Christian church members that we take for granted that, uh, okay, we, we, we know these things and we, we assume that others do not. But as we are in a increasingly secular culture, we know that there are people like you who are in that culture, who are not attending church, that still have a curiosity factor of why certain things take place, why we do what we do and why there are certain viewpoints in churches. Previous episode, two episodes ago, I talked about denominations and why there are different denominations. And I gave a little brief history of the Protestant Reformation, and I talked about the the difference between Catholic churches and Protestant churches at a very high level and how, why different denominations were formed. Now, we're, we're going to get to some of the beliefs. And I'm not going to say this denomination believes this way, this one believes this way. Because sometimes even within denominations, there's a variety of beliefs. But what I am going to do is try to give you some different perspectives. And one of those issues that not non-attenders, non-church attenders wonder about, and quite frankly, sometimes church attenders wonder about this issue. So the question that we'll be asking this day from the perspective of those who do not attend church, what is the view of women in in leadership in the church. What is the view of women in leadership in the church? Now, it is possible that you don't attend church and you didn't even know that there were diverse views, but there are. And I could I could separate these views into three major categories. Now, one thing I'm not going to do is go, th go through all the Bible verses that one view believes and one view doesn't, another view uh, group believes and, and how they interpret the Bible the way they do. But there are different interpretations of the Bible that cause these three views to be formed. Now, I want to be clear, there will be some people who have a view of one of these three views that I'm about to give you who will say it's not interpretation of the Bible. The Bible's clear about it. Well, then the other one will have another view and say it's not interpretation. My view is right. I get that. And when I say interpretation of it, they'll say, Tom, it's not interpretation. It, it is what it is. I get that. But I am going to give you the three perspectives, broad buckets. I mean, broad buckets, that doesn't make a whole lot of sense. Broad stroke. Mix my metaphor up there. Broad strokes about these three different views of women in leadership in the church. Again, I cannot do them justice from a biblical point of view. I cannot do it justice from all the different nuances of the argument. But I do want you, the non-attender, to understand the different views of women in leadership in the church. Okay, let's start off with what I would call the broadest view. The broadest view is, is no different than men. 
women in the church can do anything men can do. This is the broadest perspective. This is the perspective that says a woman lead pastor or senior pastor is absolutely fine, that there is nothing within the church that is prohibited for a female to do. Now, for, the, for those of you who are outside of the church, you may, you may just assume that all churches hold that belief. Well, they don't. A lot of churches do hold that belief, but there are a lot of churches that do not. But the broadest base that we will talk about, first of all, is that there are groups of churches, there are entire denominations that affirm that women can have any leadership role in the church. This is often called the egalitarian view, not trying to get into big words or confusing words, but it's a view that everybody has, that everybody has an equal role in the church. Uh, we'll talk about the other view uh, in just a moment. But it's, it's, it's no different than any man in the church. So the first view is women can be in leadership in any position in the church. Okay, that's view number one. Let's go to a extreme view. Well, I'm not going to call this <laughs> extreme is wrong. That sounds like it's a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a rabid view. Let's go to the other part of the spectrum. There are some who would say that women cannot have a leadership, a true leadership role in the church. And again, I apologize for calling that an extreme view. What I just meant to say is there are different perspectives on the spectrum of belief. So one is a woman can do anything in a leadership position that a man can do. Another one is no, there are certain leadership positions that a woman cannot do. And again, they each have the different scripture that they point to for this. The most common among these the most common views among this, the perspective is uh, the, 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 a female cannot be the lead pastor or the senior pastor or the pastor. Uh, they're, they're, we'll get into some hybrid views of this in a moment, but that, that would be the most common. So you have one part of the, of the spectrum that says women can have any role that men have, and then you have another part that says, no, uh, the Bible teaches that there are leadership roles for men that women cannot have. And so that is another group of churches. And I could point to denominational beliefs on that, but that is not my point. My point is just to tell you the perspective. So two perspectives so far. One, a female can have any role in the church that a male can have. Another perspective is a female can have a lot of roles in the church, but not that of the key leader, lead pastor, senior pastor, or sometimes elders. That role is reserved are men and men only. There are hybrid views of this. There are some that will that will say you cannot have the, any pastor role in the church, an associate pastor, anything that implies it's a pastoral role, you cannot be there. There are different nuances of that. But I would this position is typically called the complementarian position. That men and women are different, they complement each other and they have different roles within the church and the leadership role is reserved for males. Okay. Egalitarian, all equal. Anybody male and female have the same roles, complementarian. They have, they are equal in their worth, but they have different roles. They complement one another. And then there are nuances of that. As I indicated, there, there is a perspective. And again, I, from from my understanding of what I know about churches, especially in the U.S., this view is is with a small number of people, but a small number of churches. Let me say that, and that view is it is it is a complementarian view that women and men have different roles, but women cannot have any role that suggests that they're teaching men or males, uh, and some of them even go as far as to uh, boys, uh, not just adults. So they, they will cite passage that a, a, a woman is not to have authority over a man. And so there are some churches that will say no teaching positions at all. Essentially, you have two positions, the complementarian position, different worth. I mean, same worth, same value, but different roles. And women are excluded from the key leadership role. Egalitarian position, a woman can do anything, be in any role that a man can do. In some churches, this is a significant issue. It's an issue of contention and debate. 
In some denominations, it is as well. In other places, it's settled one way or the other. And you know, if you're going to that church or that denomination, that is what you're going to get. But I thought you might want to know that there are different views of women. And if that, you know, if, if that is an issue for you, find out about that church before you go there. I'll continue to try to answer the questions. These are not always the easiest questions to answer, but to answer the questions from those who do not attend church. But thank you regardless for being a part of the Church Answers podcast. Thank you, Cheney and Associates, for being the great sponsor you are. Thank you for those who are watching on YouTube. Hey, come on and subscribe to our channel. Let, let, let us know that you're a part of our family so others can know about it. And podcast apps, give us a rating, review, you know, a like, whatever you can do to get the word out that uh, the Church Answers podcast is a ministry that we would like to provide for many others as well. Once again, we got more questions from those who do not attend church, and we'll be addressing some more in podcasts yet to come. See you later.